I'm Ikri, Naknamalita, and this is my channel, The Midnight Librarian. Today I will be talking about my review of Robin Wall Kimmerer's Braiding Sweetgrass. This book. <laughs> so if you haven't seen my um, May wrap-up or June TBR, then if you have seen them, you'll know that um, I fell into kind of a slump in late May, early June, and I'm slowly starting to crawl out of it, but that, <laughs> but um, ultimately what helps me pull through and kind of, not even like pull through, but like just as a comfort was this book. So there was a lot of stuff going on in May. It's been quite a heavy uh, couple months. Um, a lot of us were grieving. A lot of us, it was just a lot to take in. And I know that I personally was kind of taking time off social media and time off booktube. Um, but, and it turns out time off reading. There was nothing I really wanted to get into. Um, reading wise I had tried fantasy and just didn't care it didn't have anything pertaining to do with me and sometimes that's great for people a lot I know a lot of people that escape into fantasy because it's a whole different world that it doesn't have any relation to our world so that's great um it didn't work for me though it, there was a disconnect that I'm like I, I don't want this and then there was also um like I tried to, to pick up a couple different books um, but what I am finding most often particularly during this pandemic and after starting booktube is that my comfort reads my way to escape reality of sorts is to is for me to better understand something so I felt somewhat similar in this way before um of like the news was stressing me out and it was I think it was right after the uh uh QAnon stormed the Capitol. It's just like why do some people believe what they did and that's how I ended up reading Weird Earth. Um and for this time around it was Braiding Sweetgrass. And not to compare Braiding Sweetgrass with Weird Earth, it's just that this one definitely um was definitely different. I'm just noticing that non nonfiction is definitely my comfort. Um, in terms of everything is pissing me off, um, the world is going crazy, give me some nonfiction. So, Brainy Seagrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer is an indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teaching of plants. This particular edition is relatively new. This is a wonderful um, hardback edition with embossed design on the cover and a little ribbon bookmark. Um, this is uh, published by Milkweed and this one in particular was so graciously given to me by the book wizard Neil Yazi um, and I will leave his uh, Instagram down in the description down below. Um, thank you so much Neil. I kept seeing this book kind of float around Instagram particularly when this um, hardcover came out this particular edition with a new introduction um, and was really curious and really curious and like had found it um, through my library on audiobook and just wasn't feeling the narration it's narrated by Robin Wall Kimmerer but I think it was I was too close to have um, had just finished an, a different book with another narration that sounded similar and I didn't particularly enjoy the character in that book so it was too similar to me and so it's just I kind of had to wait for that narration to kind of fade before going into this one and when I went into this one I'm so happy I did I took my time with it so this is essentially a collection of essays by Robin Wall Kimmerer that had to do with as it says on the front indigenous wisdom scientific knowledge and the teaching of plants so Robin Wall Kimmerer is indigenous and she's always been fascinated with plants and it kind of just goes into the struggle that she's had with her own teachings growing up and then going into the botany field um 
scientifically only to have her ideas of what science is um be squashed by those who are supposedly professionals um and going basically how she was brainwashed into believing a certain way um is science and not the original way that she had learned and kind of unlearning that and finding out how she's incorporated her indigenous knowledge into her botany studies as well as other people's indigenous knowledge. She travels throughout the United States. We hear of different issues throughout um, different areas of the United States and it's all just very interesting. I'm really glad that I read it when I did in the midst of what was late May, this was the only thing giving me comfort at the time. Um, and some may find that weird and that like I'm not going to some fantastical world. Um, I'm not enjoying like uh, something other than this, but this to me was what I needed. So how I, I I have already posted my review on this on Instagram, which I can link down below as well. Um, it's essentially a clipped version of what I'm going to say here. But really, like, I didn't want to be told some fantasy story of how, like, everyone lives happily ever after. Um, and really, this book, if you've ever been upset with a day but don't know how to put it into words, Robin Wall Kimmer was just someone that I could lean on that brushed her fingers through my hair and just made me feel comfortable and didn't expect me to talk, didn't expect me to know everything, but she talked. She told her stories and no, not all of them were great and fantastical that like, um, that we know everyone's gonna live happily ever after. In fact, some of these stories are very real and heavy, having to do with climate change and the, um, uh, systemic colonialism, uh, and racism that are, is still pertaining to the United States and its government, as well as First Nations and, and Canada's government. So, <laughs> it's all very real to me and I think that's what I needed of uh, just something grounding something that like I go back to the familiar and even though um, tribes nations and people indigenous peoples of the United States and Canada are not monolithic but we do have similar teachings and um, ideologies and stories they're similar but they are very different we have our different experiences we have our different belief systems but some of the things that Robin Wall Kimmer was talking about resonated with me of just like yes this is exactly what I was taught growing up and it was just that comfort of home to me even though she is not <laughs> local um to my area though I from what I understand her daughter um went to uh school here so that was exciting um but there was just different uh, something I definitely just needed it's no different from hearing one of your favorite relatives tell a story um, and just knowing that them talking is comfort enough for you. It doesn't really matter what they're talking about, um, but I mean, it does in my case. I don't know if that makes sense at all, based because like there were some, <laughs> there's very, very scenic essays in here in which like I was laying underneath a log with Robin and breathing in the wet moss smell and the damp wood knowing that at any moment I'd have to get up and go find someplace warm. <laughs> um, and it was just, it was just so nice because there, it did go into these intro, it, these essays were a nice balance going between um, atmospheric essays such as that and then going into some of the problematic things that are happening within the United States um, pollution climate change systemic racism um, continued destruction of the land due to colonialism and settler colonialism so 
but it's stuff that I've been familiar familiar with. Um, and I think that was one thing that was really just ticking me off in May was that everyone's excuse was no one taught us this. We understand the education system in the United States is bullcrap. This is nothing new. <laughs> but <laughs> nothing stopping you from picking up a book and educating yourself. Just like everyone was claiming ignorance. And that's something that I just can't stand, honestly. And I understand it using having that as an excuse for a certain things. They're just like, hold on a minute. I can't put my opinion towards this because I don't know enough about it. Like, let me look this up. <laughs> There's that element to it, but really it was like the TJ Klune book issue where people were just saying that the U.S. Um, school system didn't teach about residential schools in Canada. And it's just like, but nothing's stopping you now from learning about the residential schools or the boarding residential schools in Canada or the boarding schools in the United States. And <laughs> know that some people are claiming ignorance for this when I've known about this since I could walk. So, <laughs> and that doesn't mean that I am in any position to teach anybody about what I know. But just think about that. Is that this whole, this group of people, of indigenous people, know history and know stories that are different than you and for some reason you didn't think that just because the United States didn't teach it to you that it's I don't know it's it, there was there was so much frustration within me that of claiming ignorance and not knowing about residential schools or boarding schools and just having the audacity to claim allyship only to be pressuring indigenous reviewers um, for to educate people or to recommend books and really it was just so infuriating that I honestly just this, that's probably why I leaned so heavily into this book of just someone who also knows our history um, someone of like mind. Botany has always been a favorite um, I've always enjoyed the sciences. I'm never very good at it. <laughs> I've tried botany twice and, um, haven't, <laughs> and haven't passed it. Um, so it was definitely something that, and it, it's like a whole nother language. And to the point where it quite literally can be with all the Latin names. However, it's learning not only learning someone else's language but learning their history their anatomy and it, it's a whole nother world's anatomy and function and how they correlate and relate to each other and I absolutely love it because it's so complex but at the same time it needs more than just a semester which has been argued <laughs> about particularly within the university that I work for they've constantly argued that <laughs> a semester is not enough for intro to botany. Yes, there are more advanced botany classes, but intro to botany has so much to it, and I totally agree, mostly because not only do you have an hour and a hour lecture, but you also then have a three-hour lab. <laughs> it's a lot, but Robin Wall Kimmerer does this book in such a way that I recognized what was going on, and it actually inspired me to want to look further into it and I was so excited when one of my friends who's also read this book got me Robin Wallkimmer's other book, um, Mo Gathering Moss. So I hope to read that as well. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm never sure I had to uh, review nonfiction books, but I guess like just putting it out there just like this book helped me get through a reading slump this book was definitely like a comfort blanket during a miserable time um in 2021 at, and as the world is going crazy and it felt like everything was just being toppled on top of each other of pandemic and then <laughs> palestine and then um, 
Cam Loops and then TJ Kloon and to top it all off, um, Instagram reviewers that really <laughs> didn't need to happen. So yeah. So just to say, this one, read it, I highly recommend. I can already tell that this is going to be one of my favorites of the year. Um, if like definitely of all time so far, <laughs> but of the year, it's a high contender. Um, I'm hesitant to say like I'm calling it <laughs> just because we're not quite halfway yet, but that and I feel like I should give fiction more of a chance. I may just do nonfiction versus fiction, but at the same time, like fic I'm <laughs> fiction I'm realizing is just so much fun and just just if you're wary of nonfiction at all, I highly suggest this book, particularly as an audiobook. Okay, that was my somewhat ranty review of Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmer. If um, you made it this far throughout the video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't yet already, be sure to subscribe. Um, check out my Raise Awareness links down in the description down below. This will have um, links and uh, for information and donations um, pertaining to the Kamloops and other residential school. Um, findings of undocumented children as well children bodies as well as um, how you can support particularly uh, for the Indian residential school survival um, IRS survival it's a group that helps indigenous folks of the indigenous residential school survival society I believe as essentially a group to help um, those who survive residential school. Um, yeah, I will also have links for how you can continue to help um, support Palestine. Otherwise, I hope to see you in another video soon and I hope that you are in the mental mindset to enjoy your reading. Um, if you have read this book, let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, I would say no spoilers, but it's really hard to... to it's, I think it's hard to do that with a nonfiction. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're interested in reading this, let me know if this video has enticed you at all to pick it up. Um, and I will see you in another video very soon. Cheers.